Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Steven Universe, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stilval. Hey, y'all. Michelle Ander. Hello. And Sam Quattro. Hello. Uh, Steven Universe is back, finally, Yay! and we are talking about the latest four episodes that were released on the Cartoon Network app and website on uh, today, March 26th, today. Uh, this Monday. Uh, they will be airing uh, on TV weekly in some weeks in April, I don't know, but everyone's April watching them on the app. In two weeks. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. these episodes are Your Mother and Mine, The Big Show, Pool Hopping, and Letters to Lars. We're talking all of them on this podcast, recapping all four episodes, so make sure you've seen all four of them and spoilers for all of them. We talk about Steven Universe every t- the three times that it's a new a year here on the Overly Animated <laughs> Podcast. You can find us at, uh, you can find us at OverlyAnimated.com or search Overly Animated Steven Universe on iTunes iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Subscribe there on YouTube to not miss any of our Steven Universe recap podcasts. The other thing I want to say is get your feedback questions in. We have not had a feedback Steven Universe oh, show in a while. Oh, yeah. And in some form, one of someone will host a feedback show on these episodes. Send them to podcast at overlyanimated.com. Don't send them to Justin. Send them to podcast at overlyanimated.com. <laughs> And uh, we will answer your questions on these episodes, comments, questions, feedback on what we're talking about here. So look for that uh, in co- the coming weeks. But let's get into these episodes, Your Mother and Mine, The Big Show, Pool Hopping, and Letters to Lars. Delaney, what were your general impressions of these four episodes? They were good. And, like, they were enjoyable. Um, filler, 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 filler. Mm. But that's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. We're gonna talk about what's okay. The what first isn't. episode didn't tell us anything we didn't already know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, that is fair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that that's out of the way, uh, my favorite other like the first episode was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed. So my favorite episode out of them. I don't know. I really like Big Show, the Big Show, because Sadie's great, and I like the stupid videotaping. Like, oh, it's a camcorder. Like that was <laughs> dumb. Loved it. Um, but I really, really like pool hopping because Garnet's like, why are you doing this? Just to be random. And I was like, yes, here we go. The fu- the episode. Here it is. <laughs> and then also there were kittens in it sold. Yes! So what's, what do you need other than Garnet and Steven holding kittens? And then Garnet adopted one of them and named it Cat Steven? Like, yeah. you don't need anything else out of life. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all Delaney needed. And uh, kittens yeah. and Garnet had happened. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll, we'll dive in more into, into the cats. That's a big element of these episodes. But uh, Michelle, what do you think of these four? I feel pretty similar to Delaney and I like Delaney pointed out in your mother and mine, we didn't learn anything new. And that's why I was like, well, I'm struggling. Cause like, I love the flashback aesthetic and I'm like, glad we like, Oh, it looked really you know, cool. Had more pl- yeah. I le- I'm glad we had more plot. Why am I not higher on it? It's cause yeah, exactly what Delaney said. We didn't learn anything. We didn't already know. So it was just kind of like, okay, when is Steven <laughs> going to talk to Pearl? Like my God, like it's just that deep breath. Long time. <laughs> yeah. So like, it wasn't a bad episode, but like, it was kind of like, Oh, when are we going to get something else soon? Hopefully. Um, I also really love the big show and pool hopping. I think those are tied as my top two out of the four, just because yeah, it, Sadie's episode. Like I, I was like pretty fine on the last episode featuring like, you know, Sadie, like getting into the cool kids and getting used to singing and like, you know, being comfortable around new people. And this one just like, I don't know. It was such a joy to watch. I feel like, the the reason I kind of was like oh a filler I don't know about that it's just I guess because like I I really enjoy when Beach City's shenanigans are done well and you get a glimpse into characters' lives and make them feel more realized and I feel like the Big Show is really really good at doing that and just establishing like the the band dynamic um and seeing them progress and I really like that Stephen was using like the old camera and even like when he used the old like transitions with the stars. And the VHS effect. I just, like, I liked little details like that. And Pool Hopping had cats in it and Garnet. I've been wanting a new Garnet episode for so long. Because I feel like she doesn't get nearly as many as Pearl and Amethyst. Well, Amethyst probably doesn't get that many either. So I was really happy to have a Garnet episode. And just, you know, the evolution the, the evolution of her relationship with Steven and how, like, you know, she's, like, realizing, oh, like, I have to, like, conceive of Steven being this older, mature person and what a big shift that is for her. And it's just, like, it's so good. And it's built on, like, so many things we've established before, like, when it rains. And just, like, oh, it just made me really happy. So I really, really love those two. And Lars to Lars was also good. But, like, my top two are definitely the middle episodes in the bunch. 
Okay, nice. Yeah, filler filler doesn't necessarily mean bad. I think Delaney just means it doesn't advance the plot, which I think clearly these episodes don't really do. Yeah. yeah. That's F- fair. Filler is an episode uh, is a word that we've debated um, uh, 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 over the years, a very heated word. But uh yeah, we'll we'll get into um, in, into the plot and uh to, you know, if Well, after the- that promo and we get four episodes of filler, like oh, I you know. Yeah, and it should be noted, almost <laughs> every shot, good- almost every shot from the promo was in these episodes, which I did not expect that yeah. was wrong about that. Um there's one specific one which uh, is clearly not. Oh, and also should be noted, we will be back uh, on May 7th with more episodes. Oh, point. Uh, two wow. uh, a half hours worth of episodes on May 7th. So uh, Oh god, we're and I'm pretty sure those are going to be plot related. Even Something though I horrible said, is going to happen. Even though what I said that about these ones. another Thanksgiving episode, though. Like, we, we can May, 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 sure. May, May give I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's a if it's a half hour episode or two episodes. We'll see. Okay. Um, Sam, what did you think of these four episodes? I thought they were tons of fun. Yeah. Uh, tons yeah, of fun. Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually really liked them. I had a lot of fun watching them. Specifically the big show. That was... My oh, fave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is my aesthetic. I love the VHS aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, it's totally like uh, I love it. Um, honestly, I thought um, I thought pool hopping was the weakest because I don't know. Like, not that I don't. Not that I don't love Garnet, but I just don't feel like we have to spend a whole entire episode on that. Um, you know, just like her, just like accepting that Steven is a man now, or like a adult. Forty year old man. Yeah, that he's an adult and like you know he'll make unpredictable decisions, and you know Garnet can't conceive that because she thinks of him as a kid. Blah blah blah. Kittens are fun. Um, if Alex was here, I know for a fact he would make a comment about the cat being named Cat Steven because <laughs> Cat Stevens, you know, walk on the wild side, whatever. Well, not that's Blue Reed. Anyway, uh, yeah. So my ranking: love the Big Show, less hot on pool hopping. Letters to Lars and the mom one are okay. <laughs> the, mom the mom one's okay. Hot I, takes from Sam. Yeah, the mom one's okay. You know, I like the art style. It's like shadow puppets. I think the mom one refers to a third of the episodes on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't this know. Is yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Um, people might be surprised to hear that I did enjoy these episodes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that wow. they were, yeah, I thought that they were good. I don't think anything here was transformative or incredible. I think these are about average quality Steven Universe episodes. You could argue a little bit above average, but, um, cons- f- given, I, I certainly liked these in terms of, we- we've, we've had a ton of episodes in a row that have not advanced the plot at all, and it's been very frustrating. Um, I like this cropping more than the November, December group of episodes. I thought these were more pleasant. They actually incorporated the crystal gems, I think, better. Um, the, the episode I struggled the most with was the big show initially because it really is the traditional boardy has zero to do with the crystal gem, zero to do with the plot episode. And then when I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is so frustrating. This is terrible. But then I watched it again and it's a really good episode. So I, it's, it's good. I just, it's not what I need right now from the show. I don't need another Sadie Band episode. I really, really, no? really don't need that. I you really, don't? Yeah, yeah. No, you don't. You don't <laughs> like uh, Sadie Killer and whatever. And the suspects. No, I. The suspects. The suspects. I. Oi, oi, that's very frustrating wow, that, that we're still doing have... the Sadie Band stuff now. No, oi, no, oi. no, no, no. I hate Dylan. Nope. They are the new uh, theatrical emo band. They're basically the My Chemical <laughs> Romance. Um, yeah, people have been comparing Steven them Universe to Universe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look. We'll get into it, and I'm not surprised Sam loves this episode. It's very much the same aesthetic. Um, but uh, I, I think not. I think we. I think these episodes are other than the Big Show, which is good, but not different from what we've seen before. I think we're doing the Bordy episode, referring to like the townspeople of Beach City, better than we were before because we're incorporating the Crystal Gems, and that's the big thing for me. Is that uh, Garnet is in uh, pool hopping, featured vomp, featured prominently and letters to Lars which I feel like is the uh the, the pinnacle the king of the Bordy episode uh mm-hmm. features the crystal gems throughout we we go through a bunch of mm-hmm. uh, uh, stupid characters that we don't care about but it's fun and like uh, Ronaldo oh <laughs> I love Ronaldo I mean yeah, I'm um, glad he wasn't in it more he was wow, the only fired. like Bad part of that episode, Most importantly, yeah. we got we got PD. Most importantly, and, yeah, yeah, with a food truck. I yeah. love food trucks. The tater tots. Yeah, that's so good. So look, all I think all of these are good. I have two hot takes. One, um, 
other than it's get out of the way. We're very frustrated that there's no plot in the show and these episodes did not help. If, if you can get past that, I think the episodes are good. Um, I've seen some people think that these are like really great. I don't necessarily agree with that, but, uh, they're certainly good. And, uh, two hot takes. Number one, Letters to Lars is the best episode of the bunch. Um, Wrong. I don't agree with that. No. Too much Mayor Dewey. We'll discuss. Um, oh. Yeah, that, my that, favorite part of that one is just like the sketches. That was the best part of that episode. Oh, well, it's Pearl too. Well, I like sketch. those with Steven and <laughs> bring those back. That was so <laughs> good. Cats! I didn't know you did a Pearl impression. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll good. talk about Letters to Lars. And my second, and this is where this is the episode I want to start on, is Your Mother and Mine, because it was our traditional plot episode. When I first saw the, what these episodes were about, I was like, okay, one plot episode and three episodes we won't care about. Whatever. I'm bring on the, bring on the plot Incorrect. episode. Incorrect. Um, oh. No, Your Mother to Mine is barely a plot episode. And hot take, it is the worst episode of the four. Mm. No, actually, mm. I, I would be okay with that reading, because I don't think... Any- and these are bad, but in terms of my personal enjoyment, I did like Letters to Lars more than that one. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think your mother and mine is bad. And in fact, the you know the stylized yeah. flashback is like really cool visually. Um, I just think it connects a lot uh, less than the other three episodes, at least for me. Well, what? it's literally just like let's do a visual recap of everything we know. Right. Let's talk. Zero. Yeah. Let's talk your mother to your mother and mine. Um, because. As as articulated <laughs> enough already, the big frustration with this episode is that it does not advance our understanding of the current situation of the plot. But I'd like to add another element to that, which is not only does Garnet's story not tell us anything new, although it does confirm things, and we'll talk about that. Um, not only does it not tell us anything new, it is in fact wrong. And we will soon find out Whoa. that it is wrong. Mm, like yes. parts, parts of the story yes, are incorrect. Yes. We already know that Rose did not shatter Pink Diamond with her, with her sword. Um, because even if she you, can't do that. She can't do that. Yes. We had, Bismuth told us that two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's been two years. And, it's been two years. <laughs> and we're still not oh, past it. And that's 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 why it's so frustrating. <laughs> and they even mentioned Bismuth in this episode. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes yeah. you need some good propaganda to get people to join. <laughs> good propaganda. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. You know, she wants the off-colors to join. They gotta believe, right? So. Yeah. Who cares about cutting corners, right, Sam? Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's Who cares? Also, I'm still, I'm really, the, actually, I think the most frustrating part of the flashback is a pearl who belongs to no one. Gosh darn it, <laughs> this was the moment they could have said something and they I didn't. Know. The only, okay, the one good thing that did come out of this episode is we actually see White Diamond. Yes, she's that, that's, real. That's the big she's thing. That's the hair. And her hand, even. Like, she's a thing. And her hand. And she's- I, I, I really love Delaney's gosh darn it, by the way. But, um, yeah. Oh! It's- <laughs> That's good. Yeah, that was it's- a lot of restraint. I think if you could isolate this episode um, and not put it in the context of our, of our current, as like as fans of the show, us being frustrated with the plot not having moved, if you can just isolate, I think that it might be a great episode on its own. Um, but just given the current circumstances of this, just really not advancing our understanding of the Pearl and the Pink Diamond situation, it's, it's pretty rough that this is what we're getting at this point. Um, the only solace is that, um, we have 10 episodes left in the season after this, which will air this year. And, uh, certainly things will happen in those episodes. And apparently we will have the Pink Diamond murder mystery resolved within the next 10 episodes. So stuff, stuff will happen. Um, but yeah, I think the big, the big takeaway is white diamond, right? Because, um, we've talked about white diamond for literal years on this podcast and we have said, uh, caveats. It has not been confirmed that white diamond exists on the show. Well, now white diamond does exist. We sit, we saw white diamond. Well, we knew white diamond existed in the past. We don't, we still don't know if she exists in the present. There's been no current present mentioning of her. We just know she was a thing at okay, some point. Okay, well, we, we saw a portrait. We have never had the name White Diamond said. Which... Well, what was interested, yeah. interesting was that she calls her friends blue and yellow, and then White suddenly shows up. Yeah. So I feel like that theory of, like, White being a fusion might be, like, true. <gasps> oh. She's seen in the visual alongside the other two yes. diamonds. So they could be, But, like, be, it's yeah. interesting. It, it, it is interesting. Like green Diamond, though, if she was a fusion of, like, blue and yellow. <laughs> It, so, uh, uh, again, the caveat I gave with, or uh, the thing I said before about Garnet's story is wrong here, this is from Garnet's perspective. Garnet could have a wrong understanding. It could be that we're seeing visually the three diamonds. Oh, JK, it, it's just that everyone thinks White Diamond yeah. is a separate diamond. The twist is yeah. that White Diamond's a fusion of the other diamonds. That's still that's still and in play. Like, yes, the hypocrisy. Yeah, exactly. Right? That That's <laughs> that why we all... 
That's why we all found that theory appealing. So um, really, there's no takeaways here. Um, we did see because all of this could not be true um, because it is from Garnet's perspective. And we know Garnet has a very limited understanding of what happened because uh, we already know parts of it are wrong. And she wasn't inf- in, informed of everything that happened with Rose. But we see White Diamond's hand. We see the silhouette of her. Her hand is bigger. She's taller. Um, she's older. Very like confirmed. Thing. Very confirmed. Or, she, or she's like she's older. older. And it quacks I like a duck. Might... <laughs> then it's a fusion duck. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think some people have said she's not quite as big as, as we thought she would be. She's just kind of uh, like 1.5x a normal diamond. She's not like 10, 10x, 5X. right? Like she's she's not this... Uh, well, I mean, the diamonds are so big. Like really, the, they need to get yeah. like extra big. Yeah, they, it would have been too much, too much, too extra big. Um, but yeah, I th- what's what, Michelle, what was your reaction? And it was kind of spoiled by the promo, but uh, what was your reaction yeah. to seeing White Diamond finally? I mean, I was excited and I was hoping they'd maybe talk more about White Diamond in the episode. I I wasn't sure if the promo had like made their own legit footage or if it was going to be a flashback. Yeah. And it turned out to be totally a flashback, which is super fine. But I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we didn't really we didn't get any Pearl stuff and we didn't really get a confirmation on what's up with White Diamond. Is she just like too alpha to get involved in anything going on right now in the show? Um, but I mean, I'm glad we got to see like kind of what she looks like. Um, I like her hair. It's pretty cool. She, she looks like she has like an interesting capey thing going on. I like that. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, that's, that's like my opinion on white time because we didn't get like a lot of yeah, her so and the, the other shot we see is, yeah. um, Rose shielding, uh, herself, Garnet and Pearl from the diamond attack. Wow. How, how selfish. That work? Like how but how how powerful can her shield be to deflect right. like a three Probably diamond never. attack like that supposedly made it's the crate obviously the vibranium <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it is. Uh, um, yeah, and and that scene notable because it wasn't stylized like the rest of the flashback, right. and uh, we uh, thought, oh, this trailer is uh, being troll. Nope, it was just the episode just randomly did that scene differently. Troll. Yeah, um, Delaney, what was your reaction to all the white diamond stuff? I mean, I was just, I don't really like. It's cool. I was like, oh my god, it's white diamond, and it, like kind of that moment of over oh, finally seeing it, like she's there. But I don't think I was like that hype about it because the whole time I was like, tell me something I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which didn't happen. <laughs> Though I did, really did like the animation style and all of that. But I mean, it's cool seeing White Diamond. I just want, I just want to know more. As, as per usual, the show, it's like no questions answered, more questions pop up. Yeah. I, I think Steven at one point says, I have so many questions about something unrelated to anything yes. happening in, the, in these episodes. I was like, wow, that's pretty droll. Um, really, Steven? It's like to something like Townie. Like, uh, and it's like, it's like okay. Um, yeah, Sam, any any hot takes on White Diamond? Uh, not a, well, I don't know. So considering that we already know that Pearl, did, not Pearl, Rose didn't shatter pink diamonds, you know, maybe the story could be lying about something else regarding White Diamond. I don't know. Yeah, well, Ro- we know Rose didn't shatter Pink Diamond with her sword. She's a lot of people still think she shattered her in some capacity. Wow, like how? Right, I don't. <laughs> know. How? Yeah, how? That point breaks. Well, how? Out the breaking point. I'm certainly. Yeah, she went up to her. She just went up to her, gave her like a really big hug, enough that like it shattered her. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. It's so like hard. That. That's what the show is. I love love uh, fight. Yeah. Um, the biggest hug. S- Sam, so you're officially a pink diamond truther. <laughs> what? I think what's true. There's so weird. She just, she, she just went boop and she became pink lion. I don't know. I, honestly, Dylan, I know and you know that pink diamond is lion. So. Look, I, I I I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about this. You know that, what? I, I, I promised. Dylan, whatever. I promised myself I wasn't going to talk about this podcast. So let's move on. Um, but uh, but that's still the truth. So. Dylan's like dying inside. Dying people are inside. people are so mad that I keep talking about it. We can't. We can't. We can't I don't do care. it. Okay. Um, yeah. It's the other the other notable thing about. Uh, I, I thought it was good that we had White Diamond confirmed in some way, but it's it's just the caveat of. It being through Garnet's perspective is, is tough. Um, the other big thing I think that we hadn't heard before is, uh, you know, we heard the story of, uh, you know, Rose recruits Garnet and Pearl and stuff. What we hadn't heard was how Rose, like, became anti, anti-gem. anti how, right. yeah. how she saw that uh, it's like she she witnessed life on Earth and she grew to love it. And she has, like, started kissing humans. And a, the big... <laughs> the big so the, that was... <laughs> I was so happy that she was kissing a human. 
<laughs> okay, one. She's a human kissing a probable female human, and the fact Ooh. that Pearl somewhere is just dying in the background. Could, like, <laughs> could we? T- I don't. Personally, I, don't I could not tell. Man, I yeah. Wait, well, maybe it was before she met Pearl, though, so Pearl didn't have to worry about it yet. Yeah, Pearl was Pearl's our angst already, <laughs> even that far back. But no, no, did you? If we remember, it's over, isn't it? Pearl does mention, you know, Rose being with other people while they were together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She only mentions men, though, which is interesting. Mm. Right. She says she says men, and I think I believe the person in the silhouette is of undetermined gender. So, mm. Yeah. Um. It's it's uh the the big thing I think of uh. That, that came out of this or Rose origin story is Rose's meeting with Pink Diamonds. I think this was completely new information. So she literally showed up and was like, Hey, hey, let's yeah. not do this. This, yeah. this, this was, um, I think little... this is the cover story. Yes. Well, it's right. So we have, we have a one on one between Rose and Pink Diamond. Garnet is telling us the dialogue of that scene, but Garnet was not there. Um, exactly. I did like that's Garnet's dumb cool. voices. So that was yeah. good. Yeah. How do we know if it was there or not? I mean, she met up with them during the resistance, which was before. Well, I think, the I think Garnet was, would have said, I, "I came with her." You know, she never she never says any of that in in the storytelling. Mm-hmm. It is possible. It's a very abbreviated. Era. No, I think literally, like Rose came back and was like, yeah, her, "Yeah, she sucks." Yeah, I think Rose. Oh. Narr- Rose. But told this is it when Garnet. they came out with the plot to fake kill. <laughs> right. Ex- exactly. We, we it, 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 since okay. we're being super conspiring, I didn't expect us to be this uh, this truther on the the Pink Diamond. Truther. Stuff, but but uh, truther. yeah, th- we now have a location for when they were alone in the same place and when they could have conspired together. But anyway, this is this is the new information. I was very surprised to hear this. Um, actually, like it it's, it doesn't matter. But uh, like in the grand scheme of things, who cares? But I was surprised to learn that Rose went to Pink Diamond. And gave and said, uh, you know, j- we shouldn't destroy Earth. We shouldn't destroy life on Earth. And then Pink Diamond just laughed her off and sent her away. First of which all, is, which is conflicts. Right. That's with that's suspicious. Stephen's memory, like the, that that Stephen had, the vision Stephen had. Why did, well, how does it conflict? How does it conflict? Because, though? Well, it's because Pink Diamond's like throws like a fit. Yeah, like uh, the other uh, diamonds won't let like. She's clearly so, different than the other diamonds. Right. So we saw, like in, we saw in Jungle Moon, presumably is before this flashback, yes. because she did not yet have Earth as a planet. We saw her yes. being petulant and childlike. In this, in, in the way Garnet um, describes it, she is basically like the other diamonds and cruel right. and uh, callous. She could have grown into that. It could have been a long time between right. the Jungle Moon flashback and this. But you're right. That could be, it could be that uh, that's just not what Pink Diamond is like. It, it, is, it, is, it does at least contrast in our minds with the way we saw her before. Yes. Um, so that is worth noting. Um, but yeah, this is a big mistake uh, on Pink Diamond's part. Uh, if Pink Diamond did not let Rose go, Rose would not have, presu- in theory, shattered her later and uh, caused this big rebellion against Hubris. Her. Yeah, Pink Diamond's hubris came back to bite her. Um, but I mean, we're saying like she should have been even more of a dictator, but you know. Um, That's just like Oedipus. But yeah, this, this I think is a big is a big moment in the episode, basically because it's the only purely new piece of information we have. Rose's meeting with Pink Diamond, um, but uh, yeah, uh, Michelle, what did you think of the portrayal of Rose's learning to love like life and become not indoctrinated with the gems that we saw presented in Garnet's story? I mean, I thought it was pretty believable because, like, she, she like the, all the other courses, she was just kind of going about doing her job, and then she kind of like dropped her rocks and was like, "Oh, I got to pick them up." Oh, like, look at this cool ground, though. Oh, like, look at all the stuff that's been around when I'm not, like, doing my job. I can appreciate it. And I think, um, I don't know, from all the things we've seen from the Off Colors and Lapis and Paradise, I I feel like, you know, it didn't have to be Rose Quartz who was the one to start a rebellion, but, like, it might as well have been. I think, like, a lot of these gems could have been capable of doing it. There just needed to be that first person to really, like, start the fire, um, but I think that also adds credence to why she found so many people like to support her cause. Like there are enough people to be like, oh yeah, like yeah, this place is legit. Like I think we should defend it, and like we don't fit into the system e- either. We have ideas or look a certain way that is already not supported by our hierarchy. So yeah, we'll join in on the fight. So I found it pretty believable. Like it went through the flashback pretty quickly, but I think what they laid out like totally makes sense with like everything we know about Rose and how much she loves life and earth, which has been seeded throughout the show since yeah. the beginning. 
Yeah, and we, we get a sense of that there were more people than just yeah. the ones we know of, which oh, had totally. been, which had yeah. been presented on the show before, but this, this uh, story emphasizes it more than we'd seen before. There's a bunch of other crystal gems that uh, died in mm-hmm. that, that attack, but they were a part of it as well. Um, contrasting with what you said, um, that, uh, Rose, anyone could have done this, uh, because a lot, I do think the flashback does emphasize that a lot of them agree with her ideals about Earth and stuff, but, uh, the way Garnet presents it in the beginning of this episode when she she meets the off colors and they are just uncomfortable with her compliments is that she says uh, they're like me before I met Rose, which would um, imply that Garnet is only capable of feeling like she is and confident in herself and not uh, dismiss and not being like hating herself because of her flaws because of Rose. Like Rose is what inspired that in her. I feel like that was very much in line with the portrayal of Rose that we'd gotten previously on the show that all of this is instigated because of Rose's influence on other gems. Wow. What a right. good life and, coach. And that, that could be that could still be true, but we've also pointed about how, like, looking at Rose with Rose tinted glasses, literally, um, is kind of problematic. And there's definitely more to the story than that. She wasn't a perfect person. Stephen's been learning that too. So, yeah, like, I, I do think she has a, an exceptional quality in like stirring people to action and feeling motivated for a cause that maybe not every gem could have pulled off. But I think the willingness of other gems to do it, despite the the odds is definitely something that we, we've seen with other gems anyway. So it's not a surprise that Rose, like, literally rose to the occasion and, you know, started to throw a ball. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I feel like the make. flashback really, like, simplified it in a way that, like, obviously I had to simplify it. Oh, like, yeah. It was, like, a three-minute thing. But, like, to me, it didn't really do the whole situation justice. And it's just more of this, like, p- putting more into the Rose mythos Mm-hmm. that we've been she trying to get away from that. and i understand yeah. that's like darn it but i don't know like it was just, i honestly thought it was boring like it was interesting when like obviously like oh she actually went to pink diamond and then like the fight like when it when the animation style changed but it was ve- i thought it was very like dull kind of just because like oh we already know all this <laughs> like and i don't know i i don't feel like it was presented very interestingly to a certain point yeah, that's a, that's a good point that this fell in line with our vision of Rose we've been seeing on the show up to this point. This this episode would have made more uh, thematic sense like two seasons ago. Like then yeah. it'd been like, wow, this is exactly like, and now yeah. we're exploring all the flaws of Rose. And I think that this is very intentional. This is our last uh, rosy, there's another one, portrayal of Rose really? before, yep, uh, yep. before we completely destroy her image later in the season. I think that, right. uh, I think that yeah. you know, the hammer is coming on Rose's, Rose being uh you know, an ideal person, maybe even a good person. You know, we're going to see whether that's true to come. It's definitely going to come from Pearl. I mean, it's got to. I mean, Pearl's not a reliable narrator when it comes to Rose either, but I think she's also grown a lot. So by the time we, we do get that conversation, we're going to get a more fully realized perspective of what Rose might have been like and how it wasn't a simple, clear cut thing. And how, you know, there's conspiracies afoot and Pearl was involved. Conspiracies she, afoot. She's having trouble talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we saw to the extent what Garnet knows, unless she's hiding something again here in this episode, it would be weird if Pearl knew the full story and had been hiding it to this extent, but she probably does know something. Yeah. Oh, I really I mean, just think that the story that Garnet told is just propaganda. I, no, oh, I mean, oh yeah, let me, she, I like, was going to address that. Earlier. I, I think I think Garnet I think Garnet believes this. What she's saying, mm. yeah. I, th- I mean, I think Garnet is propagandized, but I don't think that she is. Um, I don't act- think if if we're going to get the truth, it's not from Garnet, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we saw that this episode. I th- I think Garnet believes what she's saying. Um, I, I it definitely still might be a lie, but I just think Garnet believes the lie. Like, I, well, it's like none of them knew about Bismuth. Exactly, like Bismuth's perspective. Of- Rose is so different than theirs and that's like such a a big part of why it's like well yeah Garnet really does have a rosy perspective of her but like it makes sense that they all do they all had kind of a different relationship with her but Bismuth really makes it clear Rose is willing to do things that not everyone on her side might agree with it would be very shocking if we get this like tonal shift and it's like, wow, Garnet and Pearl knew this entire time that Rose wasn't this ideal person Mm -hmm. and uh, no 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 I think that would be think, shock. That would be shocking. Yeah. It's unlikely, but it, you know that would be that's certainly effective. It's it's, it's like Garnet, who we uh, yeah. If Garnet drops the adore, truth bomb, I'll die. Yeah, we just adore <laughs> Garnet and think she's perfect. And if she was hiding something like uh, immoral, that would be uh, that would be a pretty effective moment. I don't know. Maybe that's what this episode's setting up. We'll see. I think the episode is just setting up getting the off colors closer to Earth. 
Right. I mean, in Literally. terms of in terms of literal plot, that is that is all. all it's that's the, all, the only thing that happens in these four episodes in terms of uh, actual plot is that we uh, the off colors are stuck drifting in space with Lars, and then we come up with this plan yeah. to uh, mine a yellow diamond asteroid for parts, uh, basically, and that that uh, that asteroid is crawling with agates. That was the that was the only thing. So, and then in the last episode, we. I guess, or in the process of planning on doing that. So um, that is my guess, by the way, as to what the May episodes are about, the episode or episodes. I think we are going to see the asteroid uh, and we're going to get on there and get, find the parts because that's the only thing that would connect the six episodes. And there's a reason yeah! from a MapperNet tweet. There's a reason to, to believe that these six episodes are connected in some way. Um, that'd be cool seeing yellow agates. Um, Again, well, also and maybe hearing more about yellow diamond because we the last time we saw her was the trial and that was, it's like a huge like info bomb question mark situation. I do still think she's a red herring in the shattering, but she definitely knows more than she's letting on. So I think there's potential right. to learn more about her in yeah, that next chapter. I mean, it would, be a, it would be a surprise if we saw yellow in the next episodes, but yeah, she definitely at the, at the very least yellow knows something we'll find out in the next 10 episodes. Okay. Other, other things from your mother and mine. Yeah. Garnet meeting the off colors. She's so, per- she's so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're all cool. like, oh my god, you're weird. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. predict you're going to make everyone really uncomfortable. Yeah, that was but, the best. Yeah, the way they phrase it, though, is they have such low self-images from Homeworld and uh, the fo- their forced uh, view on how gems should be that they just literally cannot accept, uh, you know, Garnet's, Garnet's compliments. It's uh, mental dissonance with her. Um, Alex, our co-host, wrote a uh, post on Reddit about how he really resonated with that and how, um, like, low self-esteem and how you just really can't accept like compliments from other people and how that was really relatable for him. Um, and yeah, I thought that this was like a small emotionally effective moment with, with that happening in this episode. I yeah. agree. And her speech, I don't know. It made me like kind of feel really emotional. Cause she's just like, you can like disprove that by being like yourself every day and showing them that you're awesome. Like, Oh yeah. my God. Like as a queer person, this is just so oh. good. Rebecca so sugar is recruiting so people into the gem. <laughs> Agenda? Gay the gem gay agenda? agenda? Yeah. The gem gay agenda. Oh my god. <laughs> Confirmed. That's what this whole the show is about. Gem. Wow. I can't believe Steven Universe was just a queer allegory all along. Who knew? What? Oh my god. Get just... one million moms on the phone. <laughs> you gotta clue them in that this show the whole time is this. this was... It's been, yeah. At the end, Garnet is, uh, yeah. She's like, "We'll still win. We'll we'll do it." Um, and Stephen's like, "There's gonna be more off colors on Homeworld." I was there for like ten minutes, and we found you guys. I thought that yeah, that was, was really good. You know, get true facts. You were there for like an hour. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that 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 intrigues me—the prospect of more homeworld, more off colors on homeworld. We t- I think at some point in the years that we've been on the same plot space for the show, we talked about like building an army and how the Famithists are going to be part of the army, the rebellion, <laughs> and now we now we have the off colors too as well. Like the the these off colors and also future off colors on on homeworld yep. can also be part of our our army. Which wow, means they're obviously literally... going back to homeworld. And we're about to like mess some stuff up. Yeah. This is yeah. just day of black sun. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. it goes better than that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah, maybe we'll win this time. But, <laughs> maybe we'll win. Yeah, and then uh, last thing is Steven talking to Garnet um, and says, uh, "My, my, I saw this vision through Pink Diamond. What if she's still out there? And Garnet's like, nah, she's gone. Okay. Or is <laughs> she? <laughs> sure, Jan. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I believed her. She seems she seems like she knows what she's talking about. I believe her. Mm, oh, I believe sure. that Garnet believes what she's saying. Right. Gar- yeah. I believe yeah, Garnet I believes what she's saying. Could be wrong about that. Yeah, and Garnet says Stephen has empathetic powers, which yeah, it's a good way. Of yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah, and by the way, we had this one moment of usefulness from. Oh, by the way, orange sapphire is what Pad Paracha is. She's an orange good. sapphire. She's rare. Rare. She's yeah, like, yeah. useful because she um, predicts you, Lars is pressing the wrong button. So. That was incredible. That was so good. Yeah, and she- and he goes, oh. So, <laughs> she, so she, she even so she he already pressed the button, so she was able to see in the past, but she saw that it was the wrong button, so she did something useful for once. Yeah. I have a I have a freezing cold take. Um, Pad Paracha is uh way past her due on this gag of her seeing oh my God. past oh, things. Obviously. It is shut real, up. It is really <laughs> annoying. Are no, you saying shut up to not. Pad Paracha Actually, or me? She's not yeah. as annoying. Well, what's the other one? She talks really slow. I can't handle oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Fluorite? Yeah. Fluorite, yeah. Oh, I can't no, not it. Grandma Polly. No. I completely disagree. I think they're very charming. Okay. And it brightens my day. 
That's like Florit's concept is great, but like every time she talks, I want to die. <laughs> The, the off color, I, we look. We love all of the off colors concept, but the show has not done anything beyond base level what they presented and wanted to us. Give them something. To, Pat Pratchett's done the same gag ten times. Oh my goodness! I can't believe the show has done it so many times. It's incredible. Wow. Um, it yeah. is incredible. It's incredibly beautiful and heartwarming. <laughs> that is one interpretation. I will say okay. her predicting the past over fluoride talking ever. Oh my god. I don't I'm not crazy about either. My poor heart's torn between like agreeing but also wanting to defend them. I mean look, we, lo- we, lo- we love them. It's just give them something else to do, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I adore them, but please better utilize. I'll agree yeah. with that. Okay. Anything else from the your mother and mine? Your mom. Oh, is they said error one, by the way. Not your mom, your mom. That is what this episode. Uh, error yeah. one. I thought that we talked about the errors like once or twice before. I thought that was notable. Um, I have to look back on what Oh, and Lars is just fabulous. Like. Yeah, Lars. Is oh great. yeah, he he does like a really fabulous clothes. Yeah, Lars, Lars is great. Okay, let's talk to the big show. Yeah, um, our sequel to the hey. Katie, Sadie Killer <laughs> and the Suspects. Uh, this is done in um, documentary mockumentary formats uh, with Stephen great. recording. And uh, basically, I think the big character stuff of the episode is how Sadie uh, has gained. This is this, my interpretation of the big show is that this is the payoff to all of the Sadie stuff we've done previously on the series. In that uh, she has gained her confidence now through singing, and yeah. we see her her blossoming during her performances and being truly uh, competent of herself, at least in these moments. And in that and regard, being I mean lo- to her mom, right? But then also realizing she appreciates her yes. mom. Yes, that's the, the 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 mom stuff to me felt a little bit. Uh, as as little happens in this episode, I felt like that was – we could have just done the Sadie blossoming thing and we didn't need the uh... – Well, I feel like it really – like, it didn't sit well with me. Like, I understand, like, where Sadie's coming from, but, like, given how they've portrayed Sadie and Lars and how much how they're supposed to be kind of significantly order, older than Steven, she just seems really childish – and everyone else is also really uncomfortable by how she's acting towards her mom. And it's just not good, which hopefully they're going to do something about it later. Because I feel like they are. But mm-hmm. it was just kind of, like, uncomfortable. Yeah, Maybe she just didn't get enough emotional development as a teen. Yeah. Or it could well, be, like, yeah. you know, like sometimes, like, your family members just have a way of pushing your buttons of makes you no, react. I understand. Kind of, like, no, my, I, I mean, great. I think that's, like, obviously a thing. It's just, I feel like the way they've just, in a show that, like, per- like, portrays really great like parental relationships even when like Mm -hmm. one of the main characters moms is like literally him i think they do a good job (laughs) but i feel like this one maybe not didn't go as like maybe the way they wanted it to or we're like missing a part of it It, well look it's very fast i do i don't think we're gonna have more on this in future episodes i believe it is resolved in this episode when sadie believes that sunshine uh justice is uh, her mom, and then she realizes that she was actually excited to have her mom at there. Um, we'd seen in the past Barb being over overbearing with Sadie, so this is continuing that and resolving it. Sadie actually does appreciate her mom, even though she um, felt that she was butting in on uh, this one thing that she really uh, liked too much. Uh, it, it's very quick. Uh, the the parts where she's frustrated with her mom are like a minute, so I don't know. It's, I it's like it was just like one episode where she was overbearing, and then that's why this didn't really feel like that much of a payoff. It's also a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It, w- it was a long time ago. I do I do appreciate Barb for, like, respecting Sadie's wishes to not be there, though. Because, like, I do think it's good for Sadie to make the choice. Like, you know, I do want, like, I realized, like, I, I you weren't there and I felt like I was missing something. So let's do it in Beach City next time. And I want you yeah. to be there instead of being, like, afraid to tell her because she's terrified about her getting too into it. So I do like that the relationship is, like, progressing better in that way. I. I think honestly, my favorite thing with Sadie in terms of an adult was like her bonding with Greg was so good and oh, like I agree. That was into good. him on the fan. He was so supportive and just like hissy, like wow, my parents had not they didn't want anything to do with my aspirations. And it's like kind of cool that your your mom does and like him just being the manager and being so supportive of them. It's just like oh Greg, I'm so glad you have something to do that's like really helping out these kids. And it just like made me so happy. I love Greg. Yeah, Greg's good here. Um, yeah, I think the, the mom stuff gets resolved. We ha- we see uh, Sunshine Justice, uh, Joan Jett. Yeah. Is- <laughs> so good. Yeah. I love it. Uh, we are hyping up this huge character Joan Jett's going to play, and she's there for five seconds. Sam, what do yep. you think of Sunshine Justice? Uh, love her. Love Joan Jett. You know, the godmother of punk. So hopefully she shows back up. 
Uh, I'm not holding my breath, but yeah. What, what do you mean you're not holding your breath? I, if you don't love Joan Jett, you know, we're going to I loved her on here. I'm just, uh. Just, just, you know, she's going to come back. I don't, I don't, there's no hook to have her character back on. Uh, uh, she's just, she's a cameo, Dylan. It doesn't right. matter. Right. I believe it was just a cameo. Yeah, exactly. But it was cool. That, but, uh, you know, you got to love Joan Jett, so. Yeah. yeah that was cool. Um, Sam, I need your review yeah. of the Sadie Killer and the Suspects <laughs> climactic performance in Empire City. Ooh, I loved it. It was like super theatrical. They did like so much that like a band playing their first official show just I don't think wouldn't do. You know, they had like ac- like flying acrobatics, they had um you know, fog machines, coffins, uh the a narrative. Legit. Lasers. They had- they had a narrative playing on stage throughout the song. It was amazing. It was stunning. The song was great. It was a mixture of like ska garage, uh, theatrical punk. It was amazing. So I would definitely pay to see Sadie Killer and the Suspects in Empire City, even though I hate New York. I have a hot it's not New York. It's Empire City. Yes. Yeah, so uh, your hot take? New York. Okay. Here's my hot take. Sam's going to jump through the computer and kill me. <laughs> I think their performance, like the song sucks in wow. comparison in comparison to the other songs we have been that we have seen from them. I thought it was not as good as their other songs. I disagree. Do you not feel like a ghost? Sometimes like I like the Lainey, like, <laughs> I didn't like the song. Like the performance was like lit. It was just the song. Like of the other of all the other songs we saw, I liked them better than this one. Hmm. Okay. I feel like that's a fair take. Mm. I still Sam love writing Sam. Sam. <laughs> you know Sam's what? I'm going to do a write up yeah. of all of the Sadie Killer on the Suspects. Yeah, that would be a great article, yeah. And I'm yeah, going to no, let y'all know. I'd love to read that. How yeah. all of them relate to Sadie and how, even if something you know you think is bad, it still comes from a place in the heart. You know, and oh, I think that has merit sure. and that makes it good. Yeah. Um, Plus, my, y'all like just need article. to understand ska better. So, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> ska is amazing. Wow, that's great. Okay, put on your fedora. Yeah, hat. Why, okay. why do I let's go? Let's go skanking. <laughs> why, why do I need to understand ska better? It's not the nineties. Uh, anymore, because, but... oh my god, be cultured. Third dumb. wave What's ska. <laughs> Third wave. There are three waves of ska. <laughs> yes, I would argue we're in the fourth wave right now. Oh my god, she. she Whoa. She, she has written dissertation An on article this. by Sam. Yeah, yeah, I want to read this so much. Please write it. Anyway, yeah. and it, my 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 big thought was that the I like the song, but the the, the reason everyone loved them was their the visuals and the props because Greg has unlimited money, so he just uh, yeah that's I feel like the the, yeah. the the visuals of the show were what popped really. Are yeah. you saying that they are basically like Kiss, where their music is kind of bad, but their visuals are what makes them a thing? Uh, sure, yes, that's what I'm claiming. Definitely enjoyed their performance in Empire City. That was great. The g- 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 ghost and uh, what's why? What's the song called? Why can't you see me? Um, I, probably something like that. Is it not yeah. ghost or just ghost? Maybe yeah. <laughs> ghost. ghost, yeah. And uh, then Sadie's like at the top at the end. Yeah, it's it's great. I thought that was the best part of the episode. Yeah, you don't care for the VHS aesthetic. I, I no, I thought it was I good. Did. We did. I, I was in the van, van, like the whole time. Like every scene in the van was good. Yeah, I, I like yeah. the aesthetic. I don't think we really did anything with the like documentary format. I thought that that was mostly uh, nothing. Yeah, they didn't really do. Oh, oh, well, I did watch, like their like the early like, days. Behind the scenes. Yeah, it's like early days. It's just like glimpses of them, yeah. like evolving and preparing. I thought oh, like made sense. Are sort of legit. Like, Watch a couple yeah, of I'd buy their merch band documentaries, then you'll understand. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't watch enough to, to get it. <laughs> Educate um, yourself. It's uh, uh quick, very, very quickly. Um, there was a part in this episode where uh, uh, with Jenny, I think it's Jenny and not Kiki, um, is uh, yeah, like hug Sadie and then Sadie mm. is blushing. Do we it's have any so thoughts good. about that? She's just excited. There's their hey. first big gig. Hey. I mean, I feel like the oh, the non the non gay interpretation is that uh, Sadie. Sadie is uh, excited for like having friends and them showing her affection. I feel like that's the mm-hmm. yeah. Or she likes Jenny. What do you think? Ooh, I like okay. that. I like that better than like very cute. So just dump Lars. <laughs> Lars isn't even a right. He's in Space Man. Exactly. Yeah, he's, so he's, like, he's out of the picture. It's, it's fair game. So just go go to Jenny, bro. Yeah. 
Okay, let's do th- any other thoughts on Big Show? And so he like designed the ghost like shirt and then Jenny was wearing one in the next scene and I thought that was, that was, yeah, was cute. Yeah, Jenny was like it's fashionable, yeah. Yeah, cool. when is yeah. that shirt going to pop up on the question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um let's talk the next episode, Pool Hopping, uh which is our big Garnet and Steven mm-hmm. episode. And uh Garnet is we start off with Garnet working at the Big Donut. Uh, which this I think is, is great. Part of the episode. Amazing. She's just filling on the orders. She's great. Uh, are you yeah. doing this? Random. What? Yeah, random. It's, it's about being random. I'm like, Garnet, are you a, since when are you random. a Garnet? Yeah, Garnet, when are you a 12 year old girl from the 2000s? Like, it was yeah. so random. Oh. LOL, LOL random. XD yeah. It is the embodiment are... of Garnet's character that when she said it's about being random, I was like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess really Garnet good. is kind of random. This um, is like this. Know. This is up there with, for me with like the arcade episode where Garnet's playing arcade games. I, I love this. I love that it's episode so good. with the Meat Bay Mania. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic. Oh, good. Um, Garnet Garnet wants to investigate extremely unlikely realities, and uh, she like uh, b- flexes and she like rips her that uniform was off, and then she's t- she's like, I quit, oh, and then yeah. she just leaves the customers hanging and like. They're like, okay, my <laughs> She's garnet. She still doesn't totally get human, like... I'm surprised that she understood how to ap- operate a cash register. No, yeah, I that love is- that she was, like, just launching donuts <laughs> into the bag. Yeah. Just Super like, fast. Yeah. Um, that that was a great opening, and then we do uh, we're doing unlikely stuff. So we order the pizza, and it's like uh, deliver it to the, <laughs> to the it's, 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 so it's so it's for like pickup. Pick yeah. Pick yeah, that was, that was funny. Good. I like that too. Wow, yeah. who they're, orders pickup? Me. Okay, uh, <laughs> they're they're delivering pizzas to a bunch of different people. We learned that in a different timeline, Onion was the one abducted. Good, <laughs> and not Perhaps Lars. So does that mean Onion is the savior in pirating the oh, no. the Lars ship in a different? He timeline? is my hero. Oh, it would look so hero amazing in that deserves case. onion. Um, <laughs> hey, you must have, you must think we deserve very little if we deserve. I onion, love but, onion. Okay, we don't need to get back into that. But there's your onion <laughs> for the episode. We deliver, we deliver a pizza to Vidalia. I thought we had three really great lines from Garnet all in a row here. Um, she says, uh, "Mother onion, open up." <laughs> Mother onion, so good. Uh, and the she- best part of this episode is her going, "Paint me like one of your amethysts." Oh my god, yeah. yes, that yeah, was that's so the third one. good. And then in between, she says, "Get excited for pizza" when she gets into the garage. Yeah. And then she's making the weirdest pose. It's yeah. so good. I know. Paint she's me like one of your amethysts is really great. And yeah. then Stephen yeah. does like he like Stephen can like fight and do all this stuff, but he can't even do a roll yeah. into the garage. <laughs> on her foot it's so amazing yeah garnet that was the pinnacle of garnet for me as uh <laughs> is that okay. sequence um they, they're like posing for the vidalia then they see a cat and they're chasing the cat yeah my, this is where i was like oh my god it's a cat and then they chase the I cat know. i was like i'm living i gotta say i agree with Lanny so much because like this show unabashedly is for like for cat people and I like if I saw a cute freaking cat eating the garbage, I would Goodbye. drop everything to chase it too. And yep. they like animated that and made a canon. So like I just no, I like, cannot appreciate so it. I go to college and like every time I see a cat on campus, I like yell and go at it. Like I'm like, is it yeah. kitty? My girlfriend sends me pictures of the cat she sees on campus. I love oh them. Oh my god. They're all my it's friends. Girlfriend. Okay, Amazing. so we, re- we relate to, <laughs> to we Steve. Relate to chasing cats. The catnip is so good. I've done yeah. that too. Okay. Um and uh we so the the we get to the emotional core of what Garnet is doing here and uh Garnet is not able to future vision the cats. Um she says she's, she's covering lost. cats crying. There's yeah. so many of them. Yeah, oh. She mm. didn't she didn't see the future of any of the decisions Stevens has made. She needs to be everyone's guide um and uh yeah, she didn't anticipate all of this, uh, like Stephen giving himself up, and um, that's really the only big one. But yeah, yeah. and uh, Stephen says uh, we should we should pick the thing we want to happen, and Garnet uh, concludes that uh, she has to change the way she thinks about Stephen and factor in that he's grown up now. But they're still not talking about the fact that he gave himself up. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, Con- yeah, Connie, why Connie, Connie, Connie held that? him accountable for that. I mean, know. Connie did, but what about the rest of them? They love him just as much he as need, she does. They need, he needs his gym moms to give him a talk. Yeah, <laughs> a talk, he's fourteen. Yeah. He's not. A, he's not like fifty-eight. You know, I, I, yeah, he's we, not we, like we, a we handled it. We handled person. that plot stuff with Connie. I think. I think that's the point. But um, Garnet's just too too supportive, and uh, yeah, she needs to factor in that Steven's grown up. 
Um, I guess my criticism of the episode would be that be all of this seems a little bit too simplistically moralistic. Like, uh, it's just like, there's, here's the moral of the episode. It's that we should, uh, choose what we want to happen, not try to anticipate the future. Um, it, it, it's, that's only a slight part of it, but yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I like I like the scene. I do feel like it was a little, for some reason, it didn't quite sit right with me when Steven's just like giving her the pep talk, like, well, we'll just like try to pick the best option and go for that. And she's like, oh. What a great idea. And I like wasn't buying that. I don't know. She wouldn't have conceived of that option before. Just been like, wow, Steven, you're just such a great motivational talker. You've totally convinced me. But that was my only real qualm. And I do like that Garnet did spend time like legitimately saying like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on me because I have this power. And it's it's really stressing me out right now because I don't know how to utilize it. And I. I'm not sure what's wrong. And I'm glad that she like kind of was able to reorient her perspective of Steven at the end. But, you know, because we, we see we still see Garnet be kind of stoic, like not nearly as much before, you know, Steven realized she was a fusion. I feel like she has come into herself and been a lot more open and had more of a personality. But she she doesn't really talk about the pressure on her that she is kind of the leader of the Crystal Gems. And she does have like this she feels like she has a responsibility because of future vision. And I like yeah. that she like had space to talk about that finally. Cause that is something that's been there for a while. I, I really like that part that she has yeah. all the pressure from being the leader, but that was like five seconds. You know? I know. I, I know it could have been longer. <laughs> I love, I love that section. I feel like we're just doing three different things right in a row here. Where like, she needs, she feels the pressure to be the guide for everyone. Yeah. And then she says, uh, Steven says, okay, we should uh, determine our own future. And then she's like, I need to change the way I'm thinking about Steven. So I feel like there's three con- different conclusions to the angst that Garnet's having. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I guess that's, I guess that's, done so we it's not just a simplistic like uh here's the lesson of the day uh, uh ending but um i think it would have been good to uh, yeah like the garn is feeling the pressure and that uh you know she doesn't need to anticipate everything for everyone you know i, I don't know that, that 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 resonated more but yeah it, at least I, I think ultimately the scene is is good and it's nice to have some emotional stuff with garnet yeah yeah I agree. Um, and uh, then at the end uh they adopt cat steven yeah. Cat and he's sleeping on lion. I know yeah, he's he's sl- cats. I'm so happy. <laughs> sleeping on lion. I'm surprised lion's putting up with that. What <laughs> lion's it's like a yeah, lion wanted a buddy. He understands cats. Yeah, he has a lady child yeah. friend. Yeah, I mean, lion ge- generally is grumpy. <laughs> so. Cats are either like BFFs or like sworn enemies. So who knows? Oh, that's so true. There's no in between with cats. They're, that's they're so true. BFFs. Okay. <laughs> And then we see the finished portrait and Steven's like a cherub, a cherub. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cherub, yeah. So amazing. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah. Good episode. Thumbs up. Um, yeah. pool, and I also like the name pool hopping. I think that's I good. didn't. Why? I thought it was going to be like them going in the backyards and like swimming in people's pubs. pools. No, it's but pools of it's gonna, pools of reality. I thought it was going to be like the game. I thought it was going to be billiards. So I was really confused at first. <laughs> pool, oh. That type of pool. Yeah. That was another Whoa. option. It yeah. Maybe nice. skating some pools. <laughs> skating some pools? Skating? Yeah, like skateboarding. <laughs> oh, oh, right. In like actual pools. Like, yeah, oh, like, like an wall. empty pool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like in, that took what was that show? And then they get, Rocket, they, they get busted pools. by the cops and then they have to go to another pool. Yeah. When's, <laughs> the, when's the, the Sam, when's the Tony Hawk Pro Skater episode of Steven Universe? That's yeah. I don't question. know. I'm really waiting for it. <laughs> I'm really waiting for it. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe that we'll would come. be a good intersection of my interests. Yeah, that that would they would be as into that as the big show aesthetic, right? Yeah, exactly, Maybe right? <laughs> yeah, okay. What, let's talk- what if what if what if the, the their beach city show is gonna be at a skateboard party? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, wow, that would be, be so trifecta. I feel like skaters would be super into their music style. They would. Good, yeah. Good, yeah, it would work. Okay, we'll see. We'll. See. I don't know if we're. I, I assume we're going to see the Beach City show since we talked about it twice. Uh, we also reference it in Letters to Lars. Um, Season so. finale. Oh yeah, maybe he's going to go see it. Maybe he'll see one of their big shows. Yeah, Lars shows up just in yeah. time for yeah. Say, yeah. Sadie's yeah. big show, oh, and then they have a romantic now. reunion after the after yeah. she performs. But then she's with Jenny, so it's going to be like no. Oh, and then she's like, sorry. Well, maybe they're okay. Friend. No, maybe this is <laughs> yeah, maybe they're poly. <laughs> Wave of the future with these kids. Who knows what they're gonna do? Okay, okay. I'm glad. We I don't. Figured- of this situation, Lars would not be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Lars would be like, "I died. I just came back dead from space. <laughs> like, uh, I'm yeah, space okay. dead." 
it's space day. And space the pink zombie. And uh, yeah, okay. So this is what we figured out the finale. Let's talk letters to Lars. My favorite, just because I, I thought it was very like comfy and I enjoyed uh, going to different scenes and stuff. Like I have you... an issue though. What's oh, your issue? Same All right. Go Sam. It's called Letters to Lars, but it was only one single letter. It was letter. one letter? Okay. Yeah, that's true. That one letter, not letters. I was so messed up at the end when Stephen was actually reading it the whole time. I was like, are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> I was yeah. so mad. That was funny. Also very Stephen. Um, yes, here's, yeah. my, here's my big gripe. Despite uh, loving this episode, I, I feel like it was a huge missed opportunity for in several sections of the episode. I feel like there's several scenes that could have been – that were like – hilarious concepts that we just didn't do anything with like we've peridot doing improv i know I was, and so we just do nothing with it no okay like they come up on stage and like i see peridot i was like losing my mind i was like i'm so excited this is about to be the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life and then it wasn't except when pearl was yelling that she liked steven yeah, steven. yeah it's like we have peridot on stage to do improv and pearl is the funny one in this God, what a mom. like what I know she's such a mom. I know we, and this is a larger sketch. We've really underutilized Paradox recently. Um, the other big missed opportunity is Pearl's first cell phone. Uh, <laughs> that was so good. This is your first cool. cell phone, and everyone. That's a whole yelling. episode. Why didn't we do that instead of uh, half of, half half of season it, four? Like, what? <laughs> here's here's <laughs> Sam's prediction of the future. So Wait, we're gonna have <laughs> a Pearl and mystery date, mystery girl date. Right? No, they're going to hang out, have fun. But then Pearl is going to go really deep into the reality of what happened with Pink Diamond with Mr. Oh Girl. my god. To like word vomit the info? Yeah. And then Mr. Girl will be like, oh, okay. And then Pearl will be like, ah! Yeah, that's, uh, that's not up. Yeah. But, I uh, promised I would tell, but you're so hot! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tell, but you're so hot? Okay. But um, yeah, so Pearl got a cell phone to talk to Mr. Girl at the end. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No, per, so, per, did Pearl get her phone so she could call Mystery Girl? Right? Yes. Like that's, yeah. We did see Mystery Girl in, in the background of the the. Oh my god, the big show. She was there in the background. Whoa! I gotta that's not, that's that. not true. That's not true. Oh, she oh was my god! There. I am, that's I'm that's dying. fake news, Michelle. What are you talking about? It's not fake. You want bet me, man? That would be that would be the first post on Reddit if that was true. It's, it's been it like two oh. years. This is fake it, news. She's there. Oh, oh, you're gonna lose those five quarters. This is we did real. Not bet five quarters, but we we'll, we'll, we'll re- re- research this. We'll research me. this as we continue. Okay, um, but uh, let's go through all of the different scenes in these. Letter Slurs was like a uh, monta or like a. Uh, I don't. Know, I'm missing the word for it, but it was like off. an anime. And like an anime. <laughs> <laughs> Ex- explain. Elaborate on that one. I feel like this is like an anime episode where like they just have catch things. you up. Yeah. Up also, Delaney yeah. said Tales of Bossing Say, which I think applies. Yeah, it's like as well. a tale. Yeah, it, it's it's a <laughs> compilation of a bunch of scenes here. So, um, yes, yeah, Lars gets the letter on the ship, updating him on the scenes, and the, the tying factor through all the scenes is that uh, Mayor Dewey is in all of them Ew. being really depressed. I like Mayor Dewey. I don't know why it took the whole episode to figure out he should work at the Big Donut. Why yeah, exactly. Thirty seconds. Yeah, That's we figured it. that out a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Hopes from the last bunch like oh is he gonna work at the big donut and then it actually happened yeah I enjoyed we, we, we we thought peridot was gonna work at the big donut because uh, been, lapis left better yeah we didn't do that then ronaldo is our first uh vignette there you go series of vignettes ronaldo is our first vignette and uh he's like lars is in space i'm the one that should have been in space i no. he literally laid on the ground and cried i hate him i know i hate him so i did enjoy you know- the irony like please cry about it ronaldo <laughs> <laughs> he's so good he's so good okay he is so uh, annoying it reminded me that he and lars used to be friends and that was one of those plot things or just relationships that was never i have, really I have developed. zero memory of that wow like, they were remember that was like kind of an emotional episode when yeah that season, was that season one in the know. flashback but like that was like seeing him upset i was like oh is he like kind of upset because he also like never like you know talked stuff out with lars and there's like stuff there i'm like oh wow that was like in season one or two probably never gonna get resolution that's too bad but that's like what it came to my mind initially yeah okay so yeah that happened that's all i got i don't i don't remember that but yeah that was the ronaldo scene we see um, Mayor Nenefwa is uh, planning for best a mayor gen- ever. Yeah, she's planning she's for a gen best. emergency. Yeah, I love her suit. She's the best. It was good, and that was she's when so Pearl's, Pearl's first cellular phone scene. Yeah. And then I just she love how she's like, "Is this your first phone?" Yes. 
What number do I text? Mass text. Yeah. <laughs> what number do I text? What, what number, number do I call God. for? Mass, mass yeah. text. Oh Yo, okay. So uh, Jenny and Kiki are going to help her out. They're going to give her that date with Mystery Girl. Oh yeah, my God, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, S- Sam is inhabiting the uh, half of the fandom, which incessantly talks about Mystery Girl. Oh, uh, yeah, even though it is because, unlikely uh, to she's happen. Hot? She's in the background, I swear. She's not, she's not in the background. She, <laughs> she has purple hair. Saying? She's the queer queer girl she's like dream. Yeah, you is. need to jump on the Mystery Girl purple train. So she's I, look, I like Mystery Girl. There's one episode. There's it's going to be Endgame, Dylan. Watch at the finale, Pearl and Mystery Girl are going to be together. I am very confident that that is not what's. Not uh, what's you're sure about that? <laughs> yes, I'll we can bet on that. You're gonna lose five more quarters, still, and be careful. Yeah. What um, is this five quarters? Where did this? Come I don't know. From? This is a weird Michelle affectation. It's a- okay. <laughs> well, I didn't want him to be out of too much money for losing. I felt oh, like that was okay. like a fair. She, she doesn't thing. want to rob me. You know, five quarters. Yeah, I'm. I have a heart, Dylan. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I understand. Um, we see Sadie Killer and the suspects. They're planning for their first Beach City show. Um, and then Mayor Dewey's a uh, ghost. Oogity, oogity, boogity. I like that. that I like him saying, why is he boogity. just in their oh, house? Oh, bed sheet. I don't know yeah. why. He's there yeah, all the time. He's everywhere. Um, Jamie, Jamie the mailman is back. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh, establishing the local theater scene, in suiting, including the Beach City Laugh Guards. Mm. That yeah, name could cons- use some work. Li- 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 is there a, you see, because they're a beach town and it's like the lifeguards, but they're the lifeguards. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. And oh, uh, it consists of Mis- Mr. Smiley, Barb, Peridot, and Amethyst. Incredible. I mean, Mr. Smiley does not talk in the episode. Peridot nope. needs something to do since her girlfriend left her. Yeah, I know. That's why yeah, that's we true. She needs to distract the herself. The fact that Activity. Amethyst transforms and they argue about it is so good. Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> I, I really wish we did something more. Uh, than that. Paradox could have made that like the funniest thing ever in the universe, and they yeah. just messed it up. I, like I'm just like really we ha- we pro- Paradox doing improv, and this is all we do. Oh my god, improv one- isn't funny. Oh, okay, okay, come on, Sam's just <laughs> rattling <laughs> off hot takes take. here. Oh man, that's what uh, I think. That's a pretty cool take. It's not. Uh, I mean, good improv is funny. What is? What is? The... I think. I think funny people have come out of the improv scene, but I don't think improv okay. itself you're is just, funny. You're just think enraging thing. a bunch of people. Here, so. I don't. Who? Who is listening to this podcast? Who is like, really into improv? Sam okay. Scorched Earth does not care <laughs> about enraging. Who is more. a part of the UCB? <laughs> yeah. So Sam Sam just doesn't care who's take, who's take, who she offends with her takes now. That's the scorched earth. Yeah, I'm, I'm offending the people who think imp- improv is I life. Okay. That. I yeah, think that okay. Bojack did a better job of like scorching the improv people than I did. Okay. Um, oh my god, different, yeah. Different show. yeah uh, so per- per- the highlight is Pearl and Steven are watching. They need a word from the audience. Pearl says, Steven. <laughs> and, uh, we, do, we do a scene about Steven every week. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I like those. So good. She was like, well, so cats in it. I'm like, oh my god, this show is so good. No, yeah, so I like uh, how Steven couldn't like decide. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, this, yeah. this, this Steven that, that and- fe- Steven and Pearl watching in the audience felt very like early this show, like Pearl being obsessed with Steven and uh, Steven like indecision. And they, I don't know, it, it, it was great though. Good, it, it, it felt nostalgic. Oh. And uh, lo- yeah, it looks like uh, the only thing Paradox says looks like I improved improv. Right. Yeah, and uh, oh. it was better. La- it was better than last week, says Pearl. So there you go. Um, but yeah, that was and the vi- just the visual of Peridot in the turtleneck and stuff. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was all good. Okay, uh, next scene: Greg and uh, Garnet are playing tennis. Mm. This was really good. He's trying rich people sports, I it was and Garnet is just like hammering him. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was pretty good. With the yeah. arm stretch, and just like being rich has made you. This weak is or something. what. Like, that was such a good line. Yeah. And uh, by the way, right before that, we referenced the telescope. I think that uh, Ronaldo is going to use. Yeah. And, I do. Uh, look at it. Can't can't go go look at it. Yeah, the yeah. one the one scene from the promo that we haven't seen is uh, looking Stephen looking through his telescope and seeing the barn on the moon. So uh, that is presumably yeah. that will come into play. Uh, spoilers. Lapis yeah. is controlling the tides. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess the moon, Lapis. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. We get the, everyone, we needed this. We needed the update on the Tiger Millionaire plotline. We see no, the we City underground wrestling I scene. I that was in there, but it is something Lars might care about, so I can see why it was included. 
This is the most worthless Bordy <laughs> plotline on the show. Out of all the out of all the worthless Bordy plotlines, the the Tiger Millionaire. I love Tiger Millionaire. It's so good. Yeah, Tiger Millionaire is such a good episode. Delaney, did you appreciate the update on the Marmalade Boys? I did. Well, not I did. But still, it reminded me of good times early on. I didn't on remember the show. who they were. It reminded me of <laughs> me- mediocre times. That's what that reminded me. Oh. Of. <laughs> but yeah, that was there. Uh, and okay, the mo- most importantly. Petey's food truck. He's a tater tot Petey. food truck. Yeah. I love food trucks. Yep. This is like the best. Except he can't drive, so it just stays sense. there. Yeah, that's yeah. the best. <laughs> love it. Hilarious. Yeah. Hot take on cool tater foods. Tater okay, tater tots. They're hot, tater though. tots are amazing and way superior to french fries. I like tater tots, but I think you're wrong. I, I think yeah. french fries I agree, are I agree with Delaney. They're, oh, they're good, but they're I think it depends on the mood you're in. Sometimes you want something hella crispy, and sometimes you want something more like potatoey and soft. I think it depends. Tater yeah. tots all the way. Tater tots, hash browns, anything like that. I'm oh, I'm hash, all for it. I do love hash browns. Yeah, hash browns are so good. Okay, there you go. Um, here's <laughs> PD. Our spinoff uh, podcast. <laughs> I well, we do this every uh, the hot take on cold foods, even though it's a hot food. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, what I, cold I, foods I, were there? You can leave it out until it becomes cold. I don't know. I'll think about that. Uh, I've been missing PD. I think PD, I despite the fact that we've had we've had way too Such many Bordy episodes, and yet we've had no PD. And he's my PD's favorite Bordy. It's really depressing. Yes, me too. And he's just been in nothing. Yeah, I, I always thought he was like, uh, the bits. And he was like, no. And then he finally gets back. And he's like, really? I would argue that Tater so Tots great. are the bits. Ooh, that's a good question. That. Um, the they the are bits tops. of yeah. hash browns. I always think he was going to be more of a character ever since Frybo set him up, you know? But then, like, mm. he's in it so rarely. It's so sad because, like, I love his voice. I love his, like, yeah. hair design. I love bed. his personality. He's, like, Steven's age. I really thought he was going to be, like, you know, maybe not as important as Connie, but still, like, he was around. The, he was the, the most important Bordy to start with, I think. Yeah. He was, like, yeah. yeah. I really wish we'd see more of him up till now, but it's still nice to see him. Like any chance he's, he, get. he's just he's just so sweet and exasperated <laughs> with Steven. It's great. Oh no, more Petey. That's all. I love him. He's the best. Get rid of all the other boardies. Keep Petey. That's my oh, well, take. Nanafaw's okay. Nanafaw's fine. Sure. Yeah. yeah Nanafaw's okay. That's awesome though. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then uh, our conclusion is that. Uh, Steven's counseling Dewey. His life has changed, and uh, he we, Erica, we he starts working at the Big Donut. He's so annoying. Would, Honestly, they, okay, here's my thing about the Big Donut being closed. Who owns it? Yeah. Well, it's Mr. Smiley, right? Well, he's in the video. Yeah, Who, in the video. uh, why didn't he have more employees? Yeah, just two, well, because the town has 15 people, so they can't have... People, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, they can't have, like, somebody just, like, work at the Big Donut. Okay, now here's like, the question. If the Big Donut can reopen, why did the Krispy Kreme back in my, in my hometown close? Like, what the heck? Oh. That's the that's the wow that's, that's the real uh, big that's question. The that's the real question. that's the real mystery that's of this. The Christy came up with a year ago. Why is it already gone? What the heck? Wow. Uh, also, is Mayor Dewey going to get burned out and then like make his own band because of like working at the Big Donut sucks? No, yeah, no, that would be no. really funny if he followed Sadie's arc. You know, <laughs> I would hate that. I don't want him to take away from Sadie's amazing journey by trying yeah, to do that's it. That's the best itself. idea. No, it's a, just a shadow Sadie arc for Mayor Dewey. That's that's the only acceptable way to have Mayor Dewey on the show ever again. <laughs> is, other than that, let's just, we're done with him. Um, but uh, the, the whole town's there for the reopening, including the Ian JQ character who has in the background character. Oh, yeah. I noticed yeah. that. Oh, he's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's there. For hot um, and then my, my favorite part of the episode, other than PD, is uh, they come up with a pink Lars donut that they deliver to mm-hmm. Lars's parents. That was really that's kind of dumb. Like, oh. Yeah. Lars's just parents. Just which, like, Lars's sorry parents that your son so is like, sad. Yeah. Sorry it's that like, your son. Sad. We it's really pink. needed to have ch- checked in with them again, but uh, this at yeah. least will do. Sorry yeah, that I, your son is a pink zombie. Here's a donut. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Are your son is a big zombie. We made a donut after. Yeah, him. like okay, that, that's that, that's really weak. That doesn't help anything. I mean, he's no. still alive. It's a, oh, it's a, it's a, so. it's a sen- it's a sentiment. It's a symbolic gesture, Sam. A donut. Yeah. But it's, like, it's a it, nice yeah, thing to do. Feel like. Kind of yeah, living. I thought it was a mo- an emotional moment, and I love Lars's parents because I love the new Lars because it's the greatest episode ever of the show, and uh, they're featured prominently in that episode. I wonder uh, how long into this podcast we're going to go before Dylan talks about the new Lars. Uh, 
with Lars. That's the that's that's there. That's the Lars's parents episode, and uh, yeah, they're great. Um, and then yeah, it turns out Stephen's reading the letter, letter popping out of Lars's head. Um, and uh, Lars, uh, I don't know who half of these people are. Who's Peridot? Peridot. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, Peridot meeting Lars. It's, 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 it's someone who misses you very much, probably. Like, probably. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure but yeah i i don't know i i just i i think letters to lars is like the most successful what they're trying for with the boardies episodes like it's it's like it's like the the board the king of the boardy episodes it's a compilation of all of the boardy characters and uh we don't get too we don't get overexposure in an 11 minute episode we're just like two minutes mm-hmm. of each of them and it's all very sweet and i liked it okay, i i did like it also it was yeah. not my top episode of the bunch yeah. but it was pretty good all of them were were pretty good though. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I had fun. Yeah, I did yeah. enjoy this. Like, like, like you said earlier, I liked this better than like the last bomb or whatever. Yeah, it, it's better. It, it was at least more. I don't know if it's better. It's more enjoyable than the November yeah. six episodes. Although I will say, none of these episodes are as good as Kevin Party. Mm. thoughts I on forgot, that take i forgot you loved that one so. i love kevin party oh my goodness i admit this i started thinking about kevin party because i kept trolling and bringing it up on our discord that these episodes are oh my god kevin you party. Would do that. and that just maybe that just made me miss <laughs> kevin party i just want to know where you're off that episode a bunch of dylan I, like i can't tell if dylan generally likes things sometimes or if he's just being a real you know, or he's just trolling it's really Really hard to tell sometimes. That's the so problem with, Steve, with like Steven Universe years, so. now. No, the problem yeah. with the show is we're so burnt out of waiting that I have to. That trolling has just become my personality with Steven Universe, so I don't really. It doesn't it. have to be. You always have a choice, Dylan. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's too. I'm too far gone for the show. It's yeah, too- Dylan is too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kevin Party is a great episode. I'm just gonna I, it's a top fifty episode, and in a year oh I'll call God. it a top ten episode. Then you'll so. like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <It'll> keep, <laughs> keep going. Uh, I'm the podcast now, so I don't have to hear your like offensive takes. Sam, you're the one who insulted all comedians on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, all comedians. I don't think all comedians do improv, Dylan. <laughs> all improv people, <laughs> and you had. Um, I you said. It- Funny people have come from improv. I just don't think that improv itself is funny. Yeah, that's an offensive take. No, then. it is not. <laughs> it's an offensive take. Yeah, I know it's not city. I going get it. to evolve into streaming. I knew it. <laughs> okay, okay. I've let's, been let's... on podcast with Sam and Dylan for a while. I know how this happened. Yeah, yeah. well, we have yeah, to cut Dylan this out Dylan thinks that I'm being start. insulted when I'm not. I'm just stating my opinion. Opinions can be mean, Sam. Words hurt. <laughs> they can also be <laughs> Dylan. Dylan. Words. Okay, Delaney. Delaney, what's your final <laughs> thoughts on these four episodes? They were great. They weren't the best, but they were all right. And I thought that I think I don't know. I think Letters Lars might be the worst, but it's pretty close with the your mom one. Whatever this stupid your name mom. is. <laughs> I want to call it the your mom one from now on. Sleep it, babe. I mean, literally, it's called your mother. Uh, the best one. There were kittens. That's all I wanted. I'm done. Yeah. yeah okay. the Michelle, kids. final thoughts. I really liked all these episodes, uh, um, and I think it's it's a tie for me between the Big Show and Pool Hopping, like I said. But I enjoyed all these pretty much a lot, even though we didn't learn a lot from the Your Mom. You mean we didn't learn anything? <laughs> we learned the think. I mean, we learned deal. Oh my god, we we learned the white stone head. No, we had it confirmed. We didn't learn something. anything. Yeah. We oh, confirmed yeah. she's physically bigger, so she's probably the oldest. We went, we went over you that. Know, something. Yeah, we went over that. Okay. Um, Sam, final takes, uh, but don't offend anyone in your final takes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> oh whatever you up, want. <laughs> the big show was the best episode of the show that I've seen in like the past month, which is. That's yeah. the four episodes. Honestly, I, I prefer the show being aired like this because I feel like I like it better. Anyway. Yeah, I, yeah, I will say, if these were weekly, it might have been more frustrating to not have plot stuff. Yeah, so because I remember being like really down on Steven Universe all the time, but I feel like I like it again. Because, you know, it's not in my oh. life constantly. Anyway, yeah, the big show was great. I love Sadie. Um, you know, Mr. Girl and Pearl. That's a thing. Uh, let's just relegate Dewey <laughs> Wait, to the... how is that show. a... Fi- how is the... <laughs> How is what? that a final take? She's not in the episode. <laughs> Wait, Miss Who? Who did Miss Girl? Girl. She's there. She's in the back. Okay, Dylan. Proof. You send the... me proof. We will. Right. You, you stay right there. I'm gonna okay. find I'm it. I'm here. I'm here. Non-believer. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I think these were 
very strong filler episodes, even though they were filler. Which, you know, the show, filler episodes tend to be, like, really bad. I'm mostly thinking of, like, the Mr. Smiley and Mr. Frowny one, and, like, the... Oh, my goodness. The Ronaldo. That is... But that's, another, that's another episode I love. The Mr. Smile and Mr. Frowny is a top 50 episode no. as well. <laughs> you are trolling now, aren't you? No, I re- listen to the recap of that oh, one. I love my that God. one. Please that's the thing. You can, no. you can find the receipts on any of my opinions because we podcasted on most episodes of the show. So I love that episode. And but. like the Ronaldo cultural appropriation one I didn't like. And like the Tiger Philanthropist. I don't know. Just usually the track record with filler is bad, but these were actually really good. The end. Yeah, I agree with Sam's last take there. Usually the boardy episode's not great. These were pretty pretty good boardy episodes. So thumbs up. Um so uh okay, hold, 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 hold your hold Yeah, yourself. where's the proof where's the proof on Mystery Girl? There it is! It's coming! Bam! Oh is it sh- on <laughs> Skype? Send this to the wrong person. <laughs> did, you, did you send this to some random person? Yeah, I did. Okay. Do they even do they even watch Steven Universe? <laughs> For a person. All right, you look at that. I'm going to delete the other one before okay, they see so it. Okay, so Michelle has sent a screen cap of a person <laughs> no. very, very far in the back with a red <laughs> circle around them. No, I'm going her. to proceed. To, I'm going to proceed to zoom in. I've zoomed in yeah, three times. No, I'm on. Her, it's her. I'm on. I'm on four hundred percent. You owe me five quarters, man. I'm on. I'm on five hundred percent. I'm on six hundred percent, and I cannot. I cannot tell who this is. That's her. It's her. I'm gonna you send you another me. one. I'm gonna send you a larger one. Send me a larger right one. Now. You send me I the smallest screen cap. What are you? <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna get this. going to die live on. There it is. There it is. Okay, so, you look okay. at that. So then you're gonna okay, pay Michelle, up. send me a separate screenshot with Sunshine oh, yeah. Justice on yes. the left, and and a oh, character yeah. circled. A character circled on the right. I'm going to zoom in two hundred percent. Three hundred percent. And uh okay, that's mystery girl. I was wrong. You're right. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Michelle. You five my now, man. I five did quarters. my time. Michelle, she your first tree cap quarters looks quarters like nothing. <laughs> <PayPal> <laughs> looks or you can mail her five oh, quarters. Yeah, you gotta mail me through through PayPal. I'm gonna Shout out to the, the beard five. guy and his girlfriend who are like at every single concert ever in the screen cap. Yes, I agree. Oh, that's true. Do you yeah, think they're on the show too? Star. Just like um, people. Probably, the but they're th- those kinds of people are at every single show. Oh, that's kind of cute, though. Okay. Notice how um, Dylan is not speaking because Michelle. I know. He's so he hard. Hard. Yeah. True. It's, if if you pause if you pause the episode at exactly uh Dylan, seven shut minutes fifty three point two 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 seconds, you will see this this very very background frame of mystery. Girl. Okay, yeah. Dylan is saying a lot of crap right now when he, this man <laughs> has put in screenshots like, well, if you pop, we have literally gone trailers. Second, oh, yeah, I've definitely second. I've definitely been on the opposite. End you this, are this person, Dylan. <laughs> yes, okay. you are. Yeah, just accept it. I reflex, man. Michelle, I think I think you're just insulting Michelle by saying she's me here. I feel like that's what you're doing, but. No, I'm saying you're like I'm just you're, trashing you. Exactly for saying, oh, who would pause it for two frames? But you do that. Oh yeah, we do that all the time. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, um, that's what they're saying. And okay, I, so. I'm gonna need the pictures when Michelle receives her five quarters. Thank I you. I will them, but <laughs> I don't know it. who does quarters anymore. I don't have quarters, so. Oh, uh, wow. People who are the they're now taking a donation mad? fund for five yeah, quarters. Did, did, I, did, I offend, <laughs> did I offend people, quarter people, with this? With a, Dylan, just Venmo Michelle five quarters. There's not a setting for quarters, though. On do you know what five dollars and twenty five cents? Do you understand? I'm gonna have to do the conversion. On oh my that. god! Oh my god! <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I if I if I Google uh, quarters to dollars on uh, with, Dylan, with that, kid, I want to. Like, you don't know how much twenty five cents is. I'm, 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 I'm honestly like curious. Extra if, annoying medication today. Like what? I'm honestly curious. No, it did not. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying like when you Google like uh, pounds to something, oh it like throws up a uh, Dylan, converter it's... at the top of Google. No, You're like next level annoying right now. Like I. I, I'm not the one who bragged about Mystery Girl being very far in the background in five seconds. She the was there. You're and bad. You're she wrong. Was there. And don't She's even there. be like, oh, I didn't notice it in the background. You don't notice stuff that's right in front of you. I had to point out Mabel's sweater every podcast. Delaney, you can't just throw back point. three years on Good memory. Gravity, Gravity Falls ended a long time ago. I, America. Okay. I can do whatever I want. This is America? Okay. <laughs> 
<sighs> nope. Okay, there you go. That's our that's our recap of these episodes. This was all related to the episodes. Nothing. Uh, we never went off off topic. Yep. And um, I think it's more fun when we go set, off topic. on any. Yeah, well, yeah. Any any uh, any of these subjects, including improv and your thoughts on improv uh, quarters, uh, mystery girl. Give us your feedback. Send it to podcast at overlyanimated dot com because we are going to have a p- feedback. So you could also comment on the article on overlyanimated dot com or leave a YouTube comment. We'll also look at those for the feedback podcast and uh, g- get in on these hot debates about anything involving these episodes and our surrounding discourse. Um, let us. I don't. I don't. I'm trying to remember any of what we were talking about earlier and uh, involving Mystery Girl. Um, uh, oh, oh, yeah. You can go back and listen to the recording later. Yeah, uh, find that time that we edited out of Michelle sounding like a robot. No one... <laughs> yeah, I still want to hear it though. Yeah, nobody, nobody heard that. And uh, uh, oh yeah, we think Lars is going to show up uh, at the Sadie performance in the finale or something. Or yeah. before and that, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. And Sadie and Jenny, yeah. Are you shipping Sadie and Jenny? Give us thoughts on all of these important subjects. Um, podcast at overlyanimated.com. Find us overlyanimated.com. Uh, join us on Discord to text chat about animation at overlyanimated.com slash Discord. Support us via Patreon. Um, if you enjoyed nonsense like this, you are the prime candidate to be a patron. Uh, and uh, support us uh, via Patreon. Uh, thanks to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast. Oh, Steve, a.k.a. Frequent Commenter Steve. So he will definitely have listened to this part. Um, Steve, let us know in Discord your takes on uh, improv and uh, stuff like that. I don't know. What else? <laughs> Three-page email. <laughs> yeah, let's... Uh, yeah, yeah. So Steve, Steve will have feedback. That's true. And uh, thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, Andy, and Hugh. And we did it. Okay. Uh, hour <laughs> half podcast on these four episodes. Yeah, that's impressive. It, My John suggested, like, mm-hmm. John suggested breaking them <laughs> into a bi- d- episode maps. And I was Ridiculous. like, Ridiculous. There's not enough to talk about. And then we end up with a 90 minute podcast. So. Oh, it's because we, 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 we had fun. We had fun. fun. So, we had fun. That, yeah. Friendship is the most important part of the podcast to me. Is that the moral of this podcast? Yes, is friendship? it is. Friendship? friendship. friendship. Yeah. As okay. long as we have fun, nothing else matters. Oh. Yeah, the end. There you go. <laughs> well, hashtag, out, guys. Hashtag, hashtag friendship hashtag. to talk about this podcast. And thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.